Thank you. Um, the topic of my presentation today is a probabilistic method to estimate the scatter of the fatigue strength of shafts in the high cycle fatigue region. And um, what is the motivation of the topic? The motivation is that the fatigue strength is a scattering. And so we have a probability density function. And you can see here the standard deviation and the mean value. And on the right side, you can see, for example, one shaft. And now we have a non-scattering stress. And so we can calculate the probability of failure if we um, determine the red area. And with this red area and the failure probability, we can also determine the survival probability. And to determine the survival probability, it is necessary to determine the scatter. And if we increase the scatter, also the red area increases. And so the failure probability and the survival probability decreases. And so we see that this, it is very important to know the scatter of the fatigue strength. But there are some problems to determine the scatter of the fatigue strength. If we use um, the experimental estimations, we have the problem that um, to determine the scatter of the fatigue strength, it is very expensive because we need a lot of specimens and it is very time consuming. And also there is a problem that no, uh, not all influence parameters can be included in the experimental estimation. So we have the aim to develop a probabilistic method for estimating the scatter of the nominal fatigue strength. Nominal means in this case that we relate the fatigue strength to the cross section of the shaft. To describe the problem, um, you can see here a typical SN curve. We have um, the area of the low cycle fatigue. In the area of low cycle fatigue, we have uh, mostly uh, more than one cracks which initiate the failure. And then we have the high cycle fatigue area, which is um, mostly a plateau. And in this high cycle fatigue area, uh, normally one crack initiated the failure. And after that, we have the area of the very high cycle fatigue, especially um, if we use a high uh, strength uh, steel, for example. And then uh, the crack is initiated from um, a non-metallic inclusion, for example, um, from the interior of the specimen. And in this presentation, I want to focus on the high cycle fatigue area. That means that we exclude uh, failures from the interior of the shafts. And we also use quenched and tempered steels as material with um, a turned surface. And now we have to answer the question, which influence parameters have an effect of the failure mechanism in this high cycle fatigue region. And now you can see on the left side, a sketch of a typical specimen of a shaft. And at first we can have a different types of nominal stresses and types of nominal mean stresses. So they can be bending, uh, tension, compression or torsion. And this means we have to determine the type of stress. Also, we have to describe the outer shape of our specimen. And so we have to determine the shaft diameter. The shaft diameter is related uh, to different size effects. And also we have to describe the notch of our shaft, um, for example, through the form factor. Um, additionally, we have to describe the material of our shaft. The material can, for example, described through the hardness of the material. And last but not least, there is the surface. And the surface um, is described through, through a surface uh, topography, through the uh, turning process. And through this manufacturing process, 
we have also de to determine the residual stresses. There can be also some temperature or corrosion effects because of the environment, but these uh, two effects we want to exclude for our probabilistic model because in the experiments for validation they didn't scatter. In the next step, we have to find a local strength approach, which um, includes the influence parameters to describe the failure mechanism to determine the fatigue strength in the high cycle fatigue region. And so we have some influence parameters which are scattering, uh, for example, the outer shape, the surface condition and the material condition, and a non-scattering influence parameter is a type of stress. And the aim is to um, determine the local strength. Uh, so we have to uh, do at first a finite element analysis to determine the local elastic notch stresses um, of our shaft. And for this um, simulations, we use the out shape and the type of stress. And the next step, we have to uh, divide the surface condition in the residual stresses and the surface factor. For the surface factor, we use a concept of view from the University of Klauster Sellerfeld from Germany. And uh, these three um, steps and additionally the support factor we use to calculate a fictitious stress state for each node of our um, finite element simulation. And with the stress states, we go to the strength hypothesis to calculate um, an equivalent stress amplitude. And with this equivalent stress amplitude, we compare it with the fatigue limit for a local point of our specimen. And for this fatigue limit, we use the information of the material condition, especially the local hardness. Um, and with this local hardness, we can calculate the local fatigue limit. In the next step, we implement our probabilistic model and our probabilistic model um, based on uh, Monte Carlo simulations. At first, we have to define our shaft subpopulation. And after defining our shaft subpopulation, we have to determine our influence parameters. And at first, we have to uh, define the geometry parameters of our shaft. For example, there could be the radius and the diameter, which, which we have to measure. And then we have to determine the mean value of these parameters and the scatter, um, because uh, we have to know the standard deviation to describe the scatter between different shafts. And with these two informations, the outer shape and the type of stress, we have to uh, do a finite element implementation. And after that, we have also to determine the surface conditions. So we um, measure different um, shafts and determine the mean values. And with these mean values of each shaft, we can also estimate a scatter between the shafts. And the same we do for the surface factor and the material condition. After we are drawing a parameter set from uh, these uh, density functions, we um, also have to describe the scatter in the shaft as a shaft inherent scatter. This means, for example, if we look at the hardness, we go to our critical diameter and do, for example, 20 measurements of hardness. And for this 20 measurements of hardness, we also can calculate a scatter. Um, after this step, we have to assign for each influence parameter an area. For example, for the uh, hardness, we have to assign the um, imprint of the hardness measurement to our scatter. This is very important for the next step. In the next step, we go to our shaft random generator. This means that we have to sort our um, areas which we have related 
to our influence parameters. And the smallest of this area is the smallest uh, discrete area. And for all of this discrete area, we have to determine or draw a random um, parameter set. And for this random parameter sets, which are stored in this array, we have to calculate a local strength approach with the local strength approach, um, which I explained before. After that, we can um, decide if we have a run out or a failure. And with this information, we go to our simulated stress level and can um, mark if we have the run out or a failure. If we have a failure, we um, decrease our um, stress with the stress multiplier and we repeat the loop. If we have um, a run out, we uh, can generate a new um, specimen. And so we have to draw new random parameters in our um, shaft generator. And if we are at the end of our loop, we can estimate the mean value and the scatter of the fatigue strength of our uh, subpopulation of the shaft. Um, we validated the probabilistic method on this example. You can see on the left side a technical drawing and a picture of our specimen. And on the right side, uh, you can see um, the microstructure of the material. We have used a quenched tempered material, the 42 chrome molybdenum 4, um, with this uh, material number. Um, in the next step, we have to estimate the normal distributions of the influence parameters from the measuring data. And for example, for the surface condition, we have measured 500 notches of 12 specimens of the subpopulation to determine the surface factor um, with our confocal microscope. And so we have, for example, for the mean value of the subpopulation, um, a depth of uh, six um, micrometer and a radius of 217 micrometer, for example. And scatter of the mean values of the subpopulation is estimated to 1.29 micrometer. And the scatter of the mean values of the subpopulation for the radius is 41.9 micrometer. And also we have determine the shaft inherent scatter and describe it with a variation coefficient, which means that we relate the scatter to the mean value of the shaft. And the scatter or the variation coefficient was 8.9% um, for the depth and for the radius 8.4%. Also, um, I have to add that the, that the distance B is equal to grade B. That means when you see on the left side that we haven't a plateau through the turning process. And so we have uh, no distribution uh, used for other probabilistic model. Also, we have measured the residual stresses and we see that the residual stresses um, decrease about the load cycles. So we haven't implemented the residual stresses in our probabilistic model. In the next step, we also determine these parameters for the outer shape. So we determine the mean value and the scatters. And also for the material condition, we measured the hardness. And in the next step, we executed the probabilistic model after determining the influence parameters. And so we generate 60 random knee shafts. And also we use a constant ratio between the nominal stress, stress levels we simulated of 99%. You can here see the results. And so you can see we have 19 evaluable stress levels. Evaluable means that the probability 
of survive isn't 100% or 0%. And you can see here in the probability paper that the mean value is determined to 347 megapascal and the standard deviation, and because we use a normal distribution, is 15.8 megapascal. And so we can calculate the variation coefficient to 4.6%. The probabilistic model was validated with this um, experimental investigations. You can see on the left side our test bench. We have a drive propulsion, um, a balance uh, which rotates, and so we generate a um, rotating bending moment on our specimen, which is mounted on the plate. And we defined the specimens or the experiments as run out um, if they reach 10 million of the load cycles. And we um, estimated the results through the horizon test method. That means we had has a test level with uh, 375 megapascal. There occurred um, two run outs and 13 failures. And so we have a survival probability of 13%. The test level two was at 354 megapascal. And there we have uh, seven runouts and seven failures. And so we have 50% survival probability. If we see at the a probability paper, you can see that the uh, mean value is. 353 megapascal and the standard deviation is 19 megapascal. And if we compare the variation coefficients of the probabilistic method and the experiment, we can see that the deviation is only 16%. I say only because um, that is a good fit because the um, experimental investigation is very sensitive because um, we have only a number of 29 tested specimens and also the load is a little bit scattering but the scatter is um, smaller than one percent and also there could be unavoidable mounting mistakes or environmental influences um, but we try to neglect this Sebastian, you must, uh, you should finish your presentation. Yeah. Okay. okay, thank you. Uh, on the right side, you see the comparison of the variation coefficient and the mean value. And here you can see that the mean values um, have a little deviation of only 1.8%. Possible reasons could be the uncertainty of measurements for the probabilistic method or the uncertainties in the local strength concept. Now I want to sum up my presentation. We identified different influence parameters on the scatter. Um, we implemented a probabilistic method for estimation of the fatigue strength scatter, and we validated it with, with experimental tests, which show a good correlation with the probabilistic method. Thank you very much for your attention and I'm hoping for your questions.